right, everybody, we got another very special guest for you all this week. I want everybody to welcome to the show, Charlie McElvey. What's going on, Charlie? Hey, hey, hey what's up, fellas? I, uh, so, you know, doing my research, I think this is a first out of over 250 interviews as uh, we have an American Ninja Warrior <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, I actually wore the, uh, one of these shirts. Uh, yeah. yeah, comic book Ninja Warrior. I mean, that's... Usually you don't see that. Not to put a not to put a stereotype on comic book writers, no. but uh, <laughs> I don't see I don't see like Rob Venditti, you know, doing a salmon ladder or anything like that. No. Um, so before we talk comics, you got to give us give us the load out of that. How did how did you get involved with that? Yeah, uh, good question. So, um, well, back in 2013, 2013? yeah, it was twenty thirteen. Um, so bear with me. I'll pull the whole hour here. Give me a second. Oh yeah, yeah, good. Um, no, uh, back in 2013, I, uh, I I just wrapped up the second season of a of a competitive flag football team, and and uh, we won two championships. We're having a great time, you know. We're a bunch of old men beat up Bruce and having a good ass time every week, and we go and drink beers and eat pizza afterwards. So, Hell yeah. but, uh, one time our quarterback he texted me and he goes, "Hey man, you want a lot of tough mutter?" And I was like, uh, "Sure, whatever," you know. Yeah. And, uh, and so we, we went to go do it and it actually, uh, it was when hurricane, um, Irene came through Virginia mm, yeah. and, uh, and it shut down everything. And so, uh, it didn't happen. I'm already down at a hotel. It's like six o'clock in the morning. I'm waiting to go out there and, and take off and, 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 uh, they canceled the event and I get pissed off. So I, I'm sitting there and I go on my computer in the hotel and I'm, I search like mud races cause I didn't know any better. I found Spartan races. Well, anyway, long story short, um, uh, signed up for a Spartan race. Happened to have a gym nearby, two two miles from my house, that was hosting a, a free Spartan workout. Met my friend John, uh, who became he was my trainer first, and we became good friends. We've been friends for a long time since then. So from 2013 until um, I don't know, just until the pandemic, I, I ran a lot of Spartan races, Savage races, all these obstacle course races. I got better, better shape. Um, in that time. Uh, while I was running those, I, I found a gym nearby, a different gym, uh, that actually had like parkour and Ninja Warrior stuff. And, you know, I was like, well, that's perfect because I can winter train indoors for obstacles. And, uh, you know, uh, well, that spring they had a competition and I took first place. And I was like, nice. Okay. I'm kind of a badass. I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do more of this. You yeah, know? yeah so, more of that. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, so, uh, ego inflated and, uh, I went and trained harder and did more. And, uh, and then I just applied, uh, one season I missed the first time I applied, they didn't, they didn't call me back or anything. And then the second time, uh, not only did they call me back, but they, um, they put me on the show in Miami. So, uh, season nice. 10 actually. Yep. Um, so it was, it was a good time, dude. It was, it was yeah. fun. And I've got a ton of ninja friends and I've competed, uh, alongside some of the best. Yeah. Um, you know, guys who have taken home the crown of yep. compete alongside guys who you you've all seen. Jamie Ron's a good friend of mine, the green haired Captain yep. NBC. Yeah. Yep. That's uh, awesome. Matt. So it's just that's what it is. So that's cool. It's fun. Man. Yeah, it's a great experience. I uh I mean I, I've been watching Ninja Warrior since the days it was on uh G four T V yeah the, J- the Japanese one. Yep. So like but yeah, when it came over to the U.S., people were like, "This is awesome!" Like this dude, this has been going on for years. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, um, yeah, but anyways, okay, thanks for sharing that. That's so cool, man. I mean, it's, we had to talk about that just a little bit because well, it, it's actually fitting, right? Because um, yeah. uh, you guys don't know this, and you'll know now. But um, it, it it was really that was the genesis of Spider Squirrel. Um, really. So yeah, one day, uh, one day I was training at the at the gym. The gym was called Polar Fitness. Um, I ended up buying it at one point um uh and turned into a ninja gym specifically a ninja gym but uh yeah i was training and uh, it was open gym and you know we're all just kind of doing whatever the heck we want to do and uh and i was actually preparing my submission video for ninja warrior so i was choreographing what i was going to do and so i was trying to figure it out and these two kids both are named alex funny enough um so alex b and alex c they're sitting there and they stop training to watch me and then they start arguing and I, I was like, what the hell are they talking about? Yeah. So I, yeah. I was eavesdropping, like, why are they arguing? Why aren't they training? And uh, it turns out they were arguing about me. One of them goes, look, look, he looks like a squirrel. He's just bouncing around. Look, he's all over the place. He's, he's like, he's just, he's just not as annoying, which is right. true. Yeah. And, uh, and so, and the other Alex goes, no, he looks like a spider. Look at his long arms and legs. I'm six foot, almost six, 
well, six three and some change. So, um, you know, he's like, long arms and legs. Look, he's climbing, you know, and 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 uh, he, he looks like a spider. And they kept going back and forth. And I was like, guys, I got it. I'll just, I'll, I'll be a spider squirrel. That's and awesome. I, you know, my mouth to God's ears, and I was like, holy shit, that's good. I don't, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. so stupid. It's perfect, you know. And so I made a logo and I printed it on my training pants, and it, it that was the that was the birth of what became a comic book character eventually. That's that's amazing that it transitioned yeah. into that. So, all right. So I guess we'll just, that's, you're doing the segues for us. We should just let you on this show. I mean, so, and then you get to the point where you want to make a comic. I mean, were you always thinking about telling a story that way? Were you like, I could do yeah. a script for this? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think they always, but I mean, yeah. um, no, not at first. So Spider Squirrel was born. It was me. Um, he was me. And, and, uh, and so I just kept it that way. And, and then, uh, I can't remember exactly. I, I just, I've always wanted to write comics. I've always wanted to create comics. I did create a comic before. It sucked, but I did it anyway. Yeah. Um, and um, it's, it's still out there if you want to buy it. It's on Comicsology. Enjoy. Watch yeah. card. Yeah, um, watch card. Yeah, it, it's shit. But um, <laughs> it's not as cool as Spider Squirrel. <laughs> but it looks good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so go look at the pretty pictures. But uh, um, anyway. Uh, I, I wanted to write. I wanted to draw something. I wanted to write something. I wanted to create something rather. And um, and at one point, I was like, "Oh, duh! Freaking Spider Squirrel! Why don't I just make a, a like a quasi autobiographical comic book? I'll just take my life adventures and I'll just twist them up and you know, kind of take the meta and just make them a comic book thing." So, right, right. Uh, in fact, in the first issue, you know, Spider Squirrel goes on a date night. I've never gone on a club to a club to date girls or anything like that. I just found. found dates wherever the hell I was and so um but I dated a lot and that was the thing that um uh, my wife has a big joke and I'll let her share it someday on the show maybe uh, about me but um but uh, well how we met was uh there was a line of girls giving me hugs they give me a hug and then they'd go to class and give me a hug and they'd go to class give me a you know, hug and go into that class and she hopped in line one day this is in 10th grade and so all these girls are giving me hugs and then my wife was in the line and my future wife was in the line and she'd give me a hug and go into class. And so anyway, that's how we met. So my, my promiscuity actually shows up in the comic book because, you know, he's dating all these girls. It's just, it's like uh, speed dating. It's like, uh, oh yeah, next, next, next. Right, right. So they're, act- they're all actually date- uh, based on girls that I actually dated, some of which I'm still friends with. So <laughs> that's awesome. So- so, so anyway, the ones, I, so the ones that you liked ended up in the comic book. <laughs> well, I, you know, I mean, not necessarily. Some of them. That's just awesome. one character. So um, yeah. I know, I know, Spider Squirrel deals with like multiverse stuff. So is that where the idea came up for that, or is that was that something you just wanted to do um, within your story? Yeah, no, it was something I wanted to do, but there was. Um, so when I wrote the story initially, my first plot was really just focusing on Spider Squirrel, Trash Panda, their relationship. Um, I didn't want to do an origin story in the traditional sense of just like, hey, I was, you know, born with powers and blah, blah, blah. I just, so um, I just want to get right into the action, right? So we just had fun. And uh, and the interpersonal stuff is really fun in the beginning. That was like my, I really, really wanted to get that down. Do the date stuff. And I wanted to kind of progress towards some dating and then eventually find a girlfriend, uh, maybe, that he'd stay with. But then I was like, I need to, I wanted to, it's going to have to come up with action. And so I said, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll tag a bunch of my indie creator friends who have books that either I want to see or uh, done or that they've already done and just kind of have us interact. Um, and then I said, what's the vehicle for doing that? Well, duh, let's just bounce me through the multiverse. I'm a squirrel, right? So, right. Um, and so that's what I did. So I, you know, I throw this random ass blip, you know, um, he hops through accidentally and then he starts tumbling through the multiverse. That's and awesome. uh, it was a great way to allow creators to kind of come in with me. And so I wrote the frame and then um, allowed them to write their characters, their world, but my hero hopping in to their world for a brief spell. Um, That's awesome. And it was fun. It was like, yeah, thanks. It was a nice fun take on like the classic uh, hero versus hero thing sometimes if they wanted to do that or if they just wanted to have some kind of silly buddy cop adventure or whatever. I, I kind of left it open to them. So. Um, it was also, uh, to be totally transparent, it was actually something of a marketing idea, too. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, because, you know, you right. get everybody else talking about their character is showing right. up in this book. And so, yeah. um, but I also built some good friendships that way, too. So um, it wasn't just self-serving. <laughs> um, 
And I think it made for a fun adventure. Um, you know, the art style changed every time we went somewhere different. Right. Uh, and the writing changed a little bit. And Spider Squirrel, I just stayed there to kind of help keep his voice intact. Mm-hmm. That's and that, I, that's mm-hmm. that's a cool approach. And um, you've done it all through Kickstarter, right? Yeah. Also, yeah. So that's have you grown like the fan base each time? How many Kickstarters have you run for? Uh, we've done it two. Um, actually, the first one had uh, we had four hundred. Something I forget how many backers. It was it was almost five hundred backers. It was great. Um, uh, nearly eleven thousand dollars. It was more than two x the budget. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, it was really successful. Super huge. And then the second one tapered off, but I expected it. So we had about two hundred thirty six backers. Two hundred fifty. Just call it that. Um, I had a smaller budget for it too, but um, uh, but it worked out. Uh, what's really what I really do though with the budget is um, the books I've been funding for the last couple of years. So when the first issue went to Kickstarter, it was already done. Um, mm-hmm. It was done. It was collected. I had it set and ready, and had to go to print. But um, what I what I wanted to do is I, there's so many things I want to tell, and I want to stay ahead of things. And so I I I funded the Kickstarter. I, I funded the first almost the first three issues myself over the last couple of years, and then with the Kickstarter, it's now pay it forward, and so into my next books. So. Um, so we'll talk more about that, but I've got, um, uh, the next series already has one full issue done. Um, there is an all ages book, which wasn't on my publication plans, but uh, now is, that I've got about half done. Uh, it's an anthology. So we just keep plugging little stories in there, here and okay. there. Cool. Um, and, uh, there's another one shot that's almost completely done. And, uh, I just funded with uh, the second Kickstarter, I also funded a 64-page cosmic one-shot, um, which artists are already paid. Everybody's working right now, and they're just, you know, that should be out hopefully this summer. So, um, so that's what we're doing. So it's really worked awesome. out really well. Um, is that all part of this, like the same shared universe, or are these just complete separate projects? Oh, okay. No, no. And oh. and what's going to happen? You're going to your Spider Squirrel's going to be ubiquitous. So he and Trash Panda will um, somehow show up in every book that comes out. Um, now it might be a poster in the background, um, uh, in the fundamentals, which is the cosmic book I just referenced. Um, the artist totally on his own did this. And I loved it. Uh, one of the characters, uh, the main characters is wearing a trash panda shirt and it's hilarious. I, uh, the back of the shirt is funny as hell. I actually think I need to make this shirt because yeah. uh, I think people wear it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's awesome. It reminds me of like Invincible when you would see uh see him reading Science Dog and then later on yeah. Kirkman's like, yeah. Hey, let's do a science dog book. Yeah. Right, right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So whether he's on a billboard or whether they're on a pizza box or a, right. whatever. Milk carton, hell, I don't know. I'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> He'll show up. They'll show that's, up there somewhere. That's awesome. So prior to uh to making these books and everything, I mean I gotta assume, were you always a comic fan growing up or yeah, yeah I actually I still have the first book. Um, it's not up here, but um, I saw the first book I ever uh, was given. My grandmother gave me a copy of uh, it was DC Comics Presents 28, I think. Um, hell, I don't remember. All I remember is it was Superman versus He Man, and it was like oh, as a kid. Yeah. It was, yeah. Google it. It's all. It's like it's, yeah. Oh my god! I was like, this is the best. Gels first controlling Superman because you know magic and everything, and uh, and he's gonna fight He Man, and and it was just uh, it was a a little kid's wet dream. Um, so that was the first book I ever had. And I was, I don't know, shit, I was probably six or seven when it came out. I forget. That's how. awesome. Yeah. It's, so, uh, I think we just witnessed Mike buying the book as you're talking. Yeah. yeah I'm like, I had to search for it. Cause I'm like, well, I mean, they've, they've done that. They did that. Well, they've done it recently a couple times. Yeah. With like, uh, injustice versus he man and all that shit. Like uh-huh. I, I, yeah, I Batman Ninja that. Turtles I have over here. Yeah, like yeah. stuff like that. Yep. 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 Um and it's always awesome where especially as a kid where you see that you're like, holy shit, my two favorite properties can cross over. Like <laughs> I didn't even think I didn't think that could happen, you know? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's that's awesome. So yeah, from there you you just were kind of hooked on it. Yeah. Um uh that and then uh some along the way my grandma picked up my meemaw picked me uh up a copy of uh, Teen Titans. The, the classic mm. Perez Wolfman stuff. Yep. Um, yep. So new Teen Titans, I guess I should say, and um, and fell in love with those guys instantly. And then every chance I got, I walked out to the. I walked like three miles to the Seven Eleven 
on Little Creek Road in Norfolk, if any of you guys know that area at all, wow. um, yeah. which is a really shitty part of town for yeah. a little kid to be walking, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no>. um, <laughs> But I'd walk and I'd go by DC Who's Who's all the time, up on a spinner rack nonstop, and I had to collect all of them. And I still have every single one I ever bought. So Yeah, that's so um, cool. Yeah, I just, I wanted to, to know everything about everybody. It was just the right. coolest thing. I, so. That's that's awesome. I think, I, I mean, I had the similar thing was a spinner rack in like a, a convenience store in an airport. But like, that was the thing was, you would go to 7-Elevens or gas stations and there was comic books there and it was like such a big deal. And I, I feel like a lot of people have that same story of holy shit, like that was my first, you know, introduction to it. And then you're like, oh, there's comic book shops too, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, that's a thing. Um, so what's what's next for you then? What, what do you got on the, the timeline coming out next? Are you got another Kickstarter coming up soon or yeah? Yeah, Let's talk yeah about that. I get it. Yeah, good. Uh, I've got a um, thanks. I, I've, I've got to figure out the timeline. Originally, it was supposed to be February, but um, I might push it back to March. And the only reason is because with some of the uh, the delays with printing and stuff like that. I, ironically, my books came first. Like I got my books, so I was like, "Holy yeah. shit, I can just start shipping stuff." But right. my, I had to wait for my prints and trading cards. Those came for one printer. I had to wait for the plushies for because we had trash panda plushies. Oh, that's um, awesome! Yeah, they were awesome. They're really cool. Um, had to wait for those to come in. Um, and then the mini figs ran a little late because they got little Lego block guys. Oh yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, I did I, see that. Can't yeah. say Lego, can I? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, so got those. So those all came a little later. Uh, I, so anyway, I, because of the delays, long story short, I I think I'm going to push back the um the Kickstarter a little bit, but I'm also adding six pages to it. So those nice. are all getting colored now. So we already got them drawn. They're getting colored. We'll get lettered edited and i'll slap them in the book um so we are going to make it a little bit bigger of a book and then um i'll probably put spider scroll number three out there on kickstarter and or zoot um and i would say early march ish so so maybe february but i don't know i was gonna say uh we you read every week about a new thing being delayed because of print issues have you seen any of that in the in your market or in the indie market well, see, that's the thing. I, I thought it was weird. So, um, Comics and Wellsprings, who I've, I've been printing through, they're, they're basically the official printer of, of Spider Squirrel until so further notice, anyway. Um, at least for this first May series, which is one more issue. But, um, the, uh, uh just because consistency. But anyway, I, I, they, they ship. I mean, dude, I, I dropped the order, I paid for it, and uploaded the files, and then. Eight days later, I had my books in hand. I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. So I had no no excuse about paper or – but on the flip side, you know, like I'm friends with Barry Gregory on Facebook, and the poor guy's been struggling because he runs Kablam, Indie Planet, Kablam, and um, they've been struggling getting paper. Um, and then they finally got a shipment of a single freaking case. It was like, wow. that, that, that sucks, dude. They're like, what the hell? Yeah. Um, the guys at Freestyle Comics, they're struggling. We They print through, which is my now my publisher, um, print through page by page normally. Well, page by page has been out of paper, so they've been run out. So I keep hearing about it. I know I get messages from Kickstarter's iBac um, uh, that are like, um, supply chain. I'm like, fuck. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm just glad I didn't get affected by it, except for it took me like two extra weeks because uh, not supply chain, but because of COVID. To get the prints and trading cards, the guy who prints them for the company for Comic Impressions, he was out sick. So that's it. The only delay I had. So, so we can maybe expect it March time for issue three. You think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I think you know one way or another it'll run into March. If I start it late February, or early March, it'll it'll be it'll be running. I'll do a full thirty day one again. Um, I think. Freestyle Comics wants to do 14 days for non-issue ones, but um, I think I'm going to run this a full 30. We'll see. Maybe not. Um, regardless, it'll be on at least Kickstarter. Uh, as long as it doesn't violate any any rules, I'll have it on Zoop at some point, either simultaneously or shortly thereafter, so it'll be able to be gotten uh, uh, by anybody who misses the Kickstarter afterwards still. So you're our first guest who's ever mentioned Zoop, and I've been looking this thing up a little bit because I've been seeing it pop up. Can you explain what Zoop is to people and why you are sure. attracted to it? Um, well, the best part is they're, they're like a, a full service. So Zoop 
has a single flat fee. So Kickstarter is a pain in the ass. Uh, it's a great platform, so I can't really get rid of it. I don't want to. I mean, it's, it's reliable. It's trustworthy. I know it. Um, and it is. It's a good platform. But like with Kickstarter, I'm using the Kickstarter and backer kit, right? So Zoop is Kickstarter and backer kit. Um, so it, it's essentially one fee. You don't have to set up anything. You just got to give them the text. So the body text, the images, and the list of rewards, you fill out a spreadsheet with your rewards, the reward uh, cost or value, um, any bundles that you're making, images for each thing, and you just send all of that into Zoop, and then Zoop will build your page for you. Um, so you don't have to sit there and go build the whole thing yourself, which is fine. I don't mind doing it because I, I do some web programming, so it's fine. Um, but not that I can use HTML in Kickstarter. But uh, they do that, and then they will, um, I believe they drop ship and everything for you. So you just, you basically just send them all your shit, and they'll pack it up and ship it out. That's, I mean, there's definitely a convenience there. I, okay. I can see more people using that, <laughs> for sure. Yep. Um, so they're yeah. taking, they're taking, they're open now, but they're taking limited things, um, uh, limited uh, campaigns. So you just got to kind of inquire, and uh, they'll, they'll look uh, your stuff and go. I, since I already had an established book, they were they were quick to say, "Hey, yeah, let's go." So mm -hmm. that, was, yeah. that was pretty easy. That's awesome. I'll we'll have to look into it more. I, yeah, cool. it's the first I've heard of it. So thanks for thanks for talking about that. Um, for for people that so is there um, Spartan Squirrel issues available like one and two right now anywhere? And if not through the Kickstarter, like can you buy them anywhere else or? Yeah, uh, good question. Thank you. Um, uh, you can get issue one uh, outside of the Kickstarter right now because of the um, uh, should I just put too many T's in that link, but whatever. Um, <laughs> you can figure it out. But uh, uh, so issue one is available on my Square site. Um, issue two, because we're just now starting to shop, uh, we, I am just now starting to ship. Um, I was doing that before I got on the show here. Uh, those aren't available publicly yet unless you go to Backer Kit. So you can go to, uh, I don't know if the Backer Kit actually will let you purchase now. Let me check. Um, okay. I'll yeah, check so that out. But, yeah. Are they in Comixology as well? Uh, number one is, yes. I'm waiting yeah. to put number two out there just because, again, I want to, I want to be, uh, I want to honor my, uh, responsibility to my backers first. Yep. But once they're once I've got them in transit, all of them in transit, then I will happily uh, upload it to uh, Amazon uh, slash Comicsology. Okay, cool. And um, for issue three, are there any other like you talked about the figures and the plush that you had? Those are for the last Kickstarters, right? Are you planning on doing any cool stuff for the next one? Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, Maybe okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'll definitely have the plushies again. The plushies. I I've got some um, uh, figurines which are on the website too. But I'll keep adding those. And those will be available to add on. They're either painted or unpainted. And then um, the mini figs will be available again. I'm trying uh, working with uh, a 3D artist and Fishley. Uh, he and I are working uh, to try to get a trash panda oversized brick. Uh, character so oh, i may okay. have a hopefully i'll have a trash panda to go with spider squirrel but i can't guarantee i'm gonna have it in time so we'll that'd see. be cool <laughs> yeah issue uh, three is gonna have a wraparound cover so that's gonna be available as nice. three poster sizes so uh -huh. um i'll let people choose their poster size that's that's cool are do you do any variant covers or <laughs> probably not <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, I did too many variant covers i did 10 for issue one it was like wow, holy okay. shit yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Do you, you get people buy wanting to buy every one of them too, or yeah, actually, for issue one, I had a I had a cover copia um, <laughs> option. That's awesome. Which, which got you all of them, but the yeah. uh, all of them, but the um, uh, the Scott McDaniel exclusive. So Scott did a cover for all three issues for me. Um, the Scott McDaniel cover is a Kickstarter exclusive only. Uh, exclusive only, Isn't that like repetitive. What the hell? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the only one that wasn't available in the cover copia, but it was available in add on. So people were, were uh, doing that and stuff like that. But I mean, the bulk of my number one rewards was uh, out of the 400 and something people, 
um, like 118 of them were covered copious. It was ridiculous. It was crazy. Was wow. Cool. wow. That's so cool. And then yeah. a local store bought, has now bought a cover twice and they're going to buy the third one too. So they have an exclusive cover. You can only get at gateway comics oh, uh, here so in Fredericksburg. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I love, I love that too. Cause that gets me to go to comic shops at like a local shop more is like when they have a cool exclusive. Um, well, before we wrap up here, Charlie, I guess like, what is the plan for Spider Squirrel? You're just kind of as long as people want to keep reading it, you're just going to keep putting out a book, or is there? Yeah, a plan fuck it, I'll keep putting out a book yeah. anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just keep putting it in the ether and let. Uh, I know, but, uh, yeah, so um, so I, I published on my Facebook page um, or my personal Facebook uh, while a bunch of like MCU like graphics of all the titles that I'm planning uh, that are launching this year. Um, Spider Squirrel Volume Two is coming. This is gonna be a, so I, I'm gonna finish this miniseries, the third issue, and that miniseries is done. Out of my hair. Um, I'm working with other creators, so I'm not writing all of my books. I'm kind of doing the the I guess the Stanley Kevin Feige thing or whatever. Right? I'm kind of yep. helping. I don't have to write all this stuff. I just kind of oversee it all, and then I, I produce it and work it to get it out. So Vito Del Santi is working on a book for me called Milestone. It's my first cosmic character. Um, he spins right out of the Spider Squirrel miniseries. Um, then, uh, I've got, uh, the new Team Force 5 is coming, uh, that spins right out of the Spider Squirrel miniseries, which is the extra six pages that I'm adding, um, cool. that I was talking about earlier. Awesome. To just kind of intro those guys officially, they, they appear as a cameo, so I just wanted to do like an official introduction and then they can roll into their, their book. Uh, mm -hmm. but Spider Squirrel himself will come back in the form of an annual, which will be like a classic annual. Will it be a, a larger Spider Squirrel story? Maybe 32 to 40 pages? Well, I guess I've been doing big stories anyway. Um, and then a couple of backup anthological style stories where it's just like um, something in the universe. Uh, Dean Haspiel's talking about doing a book with me. I mean, a story with me like that and co-creating a character. So Dean's been already in, um, getting some nice names attached to me, which is yay me. Um, <laughs> nice. And so Spider Squirrel Volume, uh, Annual 1 rather, Spider Squirrel Volume 2, um, I hope to kickstart sometime this year, probably later in the year. Uh, haven't nailed down the artist for sure. It'll either be DC Stultner or Ariel Medell, depending on who's available. Uh, DC, because he was with me since the beginning, will get first right of refusal. Um, and then, um, and like I said, Spider Squirrel's going to appear in The Fundamentals, Milestone, Alpha Elite, uh, New Team Force 5, somewhere. You know, like I said, even if it's just a billboard in the background. So mm -hmm. uh, look for the little Easter eggs. Um, I'll awesome. keep putting books out as long as I can. I mean, Awesome. Even if people aren't buying them, if I can afford to put them out there, somebody will buy them. Shit, I hope. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to buy them. You'll have some people buy it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. You've got to build uh, a spider squirrel empire. Yeah. Well, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I was going to say, you said annual, and I've got issue one right here, everybody. Yeah, and, there uh, it is. This is like pretty annual sized right here, so... Yeah, yeah, so that's forty pages. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot so this, of comics. This isn't a twenty-page comic. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and it's funny because I remember Chris like talking about the book before we even you know had you scheduled to be on the show or anything. He's like, "There's this book called Spider Squirrel," and I'm like, "Dude, that's right up your alley." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't even need to hear any more. You just need to read that book. Yeah, and uh, usually when I say trash panda, like somebody's pants get wet. You know, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I think I, per, I personally, I think I like trash panda more than spider squirrel, but that's just me. I just, that's okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you, somehow that Z guy hit with him. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but yeah. uh, I don't know. And the and the pineapple pizza thing, like that, follows me everywhere now, which is fantastic. Really? So, yeah. oh yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, it's, it's listen, yeah. my my life when people don't know what to get me for a gift, I either get something Captain America, something Eagles, Philadelphia Eagles, or something Squirrel. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> like those are the That's go to twos for Chris. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, that that makes sense too. I mean I yeah, I wouldn't see it any other way for you. Um, Charlie, thanks thanks for being here. And you you mentioned your Facebook a little bit, so is that the best place people can follow you or our listeners? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, you know, if you guys want to just follow my personal page, it's fine. There is a Spider Squirrel page, it's the Zion Studio page, Studios page. Um, but you're welcome to follow my personal Facebook. I do tend to accept pretty much whoever will will friend me, but uh, I do walk you away in some restricted area. So. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I post a lot about Spider Squirrel comics in general. I'm a big supporter of and a huge backer on I'm a super backer, like 380 something stupid comics. I'm still gonna read. Yeah. They're all over there. 
Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I'm a huge supporter of the indie comics community, so uh, I'd love for you guys to follow me, and, and I'll, I'll post cool comic stuff whenever I can. Very cool, man. Yeah. yeah um, everybody, make sure to check the show notes down below. I'll have links to Zion Studios' website, as well as the Comicsology page, so you can go and check out the books. Thanks so much, Charlie, for being on the show, man. Uh, it was a great time talking to you. Yeah, thanks, thanks guys. Ditto.